Jaguars. Hello students, welcome to Arithmetic classes. Today we are going to discuss about types of proportion. Already we discussed the formulas of types of proportions. So first one, fourth proportion, you know very well. If A is to B is equal to C is to D, then D is called fourth proportion of ABC. If A, B, C, D are in proportion, then D is called fourth proportion of ABC. Then you can write D is equal to BC by A. D is equal to BC by A. So this is fourth proportion of ABC. And uh, if A is to B is equal to B is to C, if A is to B is equal to C, B is to C, then C is called to third proportion. Third proportion of A and B, then you can write C is equal to B square by A. C is equal to B square by A. And uh, if A is to B is equal to B is to C, if A is to B is equal to B is to C, then B is called to mean proportion, mean proportion, second proportion or geometric mean, all are same. So, mean proportion of A and C, then B is equal to root of AC, root of AC. So, this is fourth proportion and this is third proportion, this is mean proportion. So, fourth proportion is defined on general proportion, but uh, third proportion and uh, mean proportions are defined on continual proportion. If A is to B is equal to B is to C, A is to B is equal to C is to D. If A is to B is equal to C is to D, then you can say A, B, C and D are in uh, proportion. But A is to B is equal to B is to C. A is to B is equal to B is to C. You have to notice uh, mean values are same. Then if mean values are same in the given uh, ratios, then the ratio, the ratio is called continuous. The, the terms A, B and C are in uh, set to be or set to be in uh, continued proportion. So, your uh, third proportion and mean proportion are defined on continued proportion, but the fourth proportion is defined on uh, general proportion. So, these are the types of uh, proportion. Now, we discuss about problems. One of the problems is Jedam, right? So, already discussed Jesham Dilamida, right? Fourth proportion, fine. Fine, fourth proportion. Find fourth proportion, fourth proportion of, fourth proportion of 24, 18 and uh, 36, okay. So, 24, 18 and uh, 36, fourth proportion of 24, 18 and uh, 36. Then, the given three terms, the given three terms are treated as A, B, C, A, B, C. Then this is A, this is B, this is C. You have to take the numbers, given numbers are uh, A, B, C respectively. You, you need not to change, you need not to change, you don't change the order. The first term is taken as A, the second is taken as B, the third is taken as C. Then third proportion is B, C by A. Third proportion is B, C by A. Then what is the B? 18. What is C? 36. Then the A is uh, 24. A is 24, right? So 12, 3 is? 12 twos, 12 threes, 12 twos, next to 2, 1, 2, 9s, 9 into 3, 27, 27 is the third proportion of given terms 24, 18 and 36, this is the simplest way, this is a simple thing, okay, so just you have to remember the formula, the fourth proportion of ABC is BC by A, so what is the fourth proportion of 24, 18 and 36, 27, 27, right, so you take one another question, <coughs> Find fourth proportion, find fourth proportion, find fourth proportion of, of 12, 15 and 48. Find fourth proportion of 12, 15 and 48, 12, 15 and 48. Then what is fourth proportion? BC by A. The given three terms uh, should be taken as A, B and C respectively. A, B and C respectively. A is 12, B is 15, C is 48. B, C by A, B, C, 15 into 48 by 12. So, B, C, B, 15, C, 48, A, 12. So, 12, 1, 12, fours. So, 15 into 4, 60. 60 is the answer. 60 is the answer. 60 is what? 
60 is fourth proportion of 12, 15 and uh, 48. So, 12 is to 15 definitely is equal to 48 is to 60. So, 12 is to 15 is uh, definitely is equal to definitely proportional to 48 and 60. So, 12 1 is 12, 5. Mm, so, uh, 3 4 3, 5 same as 12 4 is 12, 5. So, 4 is to 5, 4 is to 5. So, this is the fourth proportion, 60 is the fourth proportion of 12, 15 and uh, 48, right. Next one, next question, find third proportion, find third, third proportion, find third proportion of, find third proportion of <coughs> 24 and uh, 36, find third proportion of 24 and 36 for th third proportion. So, to find third proportion just you, you need only two terms. To find third proportion we need only two terms. So, first term is taken as A, the second is taken as B, then what is third proportion of A and B? So, simply B square by A. Third proportion of A and B is what? B square by A. So, B square what is B? 36. 36 into 36 by what is A? 24. 24 right 36 into 36 by 24 so 12 threes 12 twos 12 threes 12 twos 2 1 2 18 18 into 3 54 54 is the answer 18 into 3 54 so third proportion of 24 and 36 is 54 third proportion of 24 and 36 is 54 right then go question this kunam <coughs> next question Find third proportion. Find third proportion. Find third proportion of of <coughs> x square minus y square and uh, x plus y. X square minus y square and uh, x plus y. Find third proportion of x square minus y square and x plus y. So, this is uh, RSL B2, RSL Pusagan lo question am de. So, this is very important question of course. Then find third proportion of x square minus y square and x plus y. Then what is third proportion? B square by A, B square by A, B square by A, right. Then the first term is taken as, okay, definitely you have to take the first term as A, the second A is as a B, B square by A. Then what is B? x plus y. So, x plus y into x plus y, x plus y into x plus y, then what is a x square minus y square, x square minus y square, x square minus y square x plus y into x plus y, b means uh, x plus y and a means x square minus y square, this is equal x plus y into x plus y by x u a square minus b square. Okay, you know very well a square minus b square is equal a plus b into a minus b a plus b x plus y into x minus y x plus y into x minus y then x plus y x plus y get cancelled. Here we have two terms and uh, denominator uh, also has also two terms x plus y x plus y get uh, cancelled the remaining terms x plus y by x minus y x plus y by x minus y this is the third proportion of given two terms x square minus y square and x plus y ok. So, you have to take this to, uh, this is the single term ok. There are no two terms just uh, just the this is uh, only single term and this is also single term. So, x plus y by x minus y x plus y by x minus y is the third proportion of the given term. Some of the students do like this. So, like this uh, b square by a b square by a. So, b square x plus y whole square by x square minus y square. Some of the students uh, do like this, but uh, this is the correct, no, this is not correct method x plus y whole square, then x plus y whole square, then then only expans expansion just sir. Okay, expansion, what is uh, a plus b whole square formula, a square plus b square plus 2ab, according to a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab, the same as x square plus y square, x plus y whole square is equal to x square plus y square plus 2xy by and uh, in the same as in the same as a square minus b square is equal to a plus b into a minus b in the same manner you can write x minus y into x plus y x minus y into x plus y but you cannot simplify this uh, term again 
so here we have only single term x square plus y square plus 2x y is the single term so plus one and only multiplication multiplication under the the terms are different but here if you have plus or minus if you have plus or minus between the terms then that term should be uh, treated as single so this is single term but here we have two terms so you cannot cancel you cannot cancel you cannot simplify this one so that this is not correct one so simply you have to write b square b is x plus y into x plus y and a is x square minus y square if you expand uh, if you expand this one as x plus y into x minus y then you can cancel x plus y x plus y and the remaining are x plus y by x minus y so this is the third proportion of x square minus y square in and x plus y so third proportion is very important so <clears throat> you can expect one question on third proportion so this is one another question write down find third proportion find third proportion find third proportion of find third proportion of 0.06 and 0.8 find third proportion of 0.06 and 0.8 third proportion <coughs> third proportion form of b square by a so b square by a first term b this is a this is b so 0.8 is b and 0.06 is a b square so you can write 0.8 into 0.8 by 0.06 0.8 into 0.8 by 0.06 so you can write uh, here we have two decimals and here Uh, in the numerator we have two de decimals in the denominator we have two decimals so you can write 8 into 8 8 into 8 by 6 so you cannot get uh, any zeros more okay 8 into 8 so 2 fours 2 threes 2 four 2 threes 8 four 32 32 by 3 okay dividing 32 by 3 dividing 32 by 3 then you can you can get uh, 3 tens Three tens thirty point six six. Ten point six six is the third proportion of the given term zero point zero six and zero point eight. Zero point zero six and zero point zero eight. Ten point six six. Ten point six six. Third proportion. So you, here we have two decimals. This is also this is also these two are two decimals and in the denominator we have only two decimals. So you cannot get any zeros more. So 32 by 3 that is equal 10.66 right next question next one find geometric mean find geometric mean find geometric mean find geometric mean of 18 and uh, 8 18 and uh, 8 find geometric mean of 18 and 8 so geometric mean mean proportion both are same then what is the geometric mean of a and c the geometric mean of a and c is what root of ac and of course the geometric mean of a and b the geometric mean of a and b is also root of ab so you can write uh, this as a and uh, this one as a c of course b okay you can take uh, 8 as b or c then the geometric mean of 18 and 8 is root of 18 into 8 root of 18 into 8 So each and every term is square root of rasa. Then you will get a geometric mean. Our terms y na c na. You need not to think about the given terms. Just to you have to you have to put the given terms in the square root. Then you will get a mean proportion of the given terms. Okay, root of 18 into 8. So root of 18 is not a perfect square, and 8 is not a perfect square. So that you can you may multiply 18 and 8. You have to multiply 18 and 8. 18 18s. 18 8 uh, 144 root of uh, 18 into 8 18 8 144 root 144 is equal to what 12 12 is the mean proportion of 18 and uh, 8 definitely the mean proportion of the given two terms definitely the mean proportion of uh, the geometric mean of two terms uh, lies between the given two terms so 12 this kind of 12 and the 18 and 18 in middle lo untundi if you take any geometric mean of the given two terms uh, definitely lies between the given terms right and next question next one so <clears throat> find mean proportion 
find the mean proportion find the mean proportion of find the mean proportion of 360 360 and 90 find the mean proportion of 360 and 90 so this uh, square root of 360 and 90 square root of 360 into 90 is a mean proportion of the 360 and 90 so root of 360 into 90 so 360 is not a perfect square and of course 90 is not a perfect square then you have to simplify this one then you will get a mean proportion of the given terms root of 360 so 360 can be written as 36 36 in 10 in the same manner 90 can be written as 9 into 10 9 into 10 root of 360 360 can be written as 36 into 10 and 90 is written as 9 into 10 so root of next to root 36 6 36 is a perfect square you can write a root 36 as 6 and root 9 root 9 9 is a perfect square then you can write root 9 is what 3 and this into root of 10 into 10 root of 10 into 10 100 root 100 root 100 is nothing but 10 so 6 3 is 18 18 into 10 180 so 180 180 is the mean proportion of 360 and 90 okay the 180 and the 360 90 you come mean proportion and which lies between 360 and 90. 360 and 90 madhya lo okay 180 mean proportion yen find out jeshna sare adhi madhya lo right so these are the fundamentals of ratio and proportion we discussed about ratio and types of ratios and we discussed proportion and types of proportion we can see next in just some of the application questions discuss just to tell them ratio proportion some the basic questions fundamental questions and you will discuss now we are going to so practice um, application questions applications questions concept oriented questions so manam discuss just some right <coughs> listen to me next one next question in the ratio next question write down in the ratio 5 is to 8 in the ratio 5 is to 8 30 is if if 30 is antecedent if 30 is antecedent antecedent then find then find its consequent then find its consequent right in the ratio 5 is to 8 if 30 is antecedent if 30 is antecedent then find its consequent so you know very well in the ratio a is to b in the ratio a is to b the first term a is called antecedent the first term a is called antecedent and uh, the second term antecedent the second term b is called consequent so mana munde rasukunnam idi in the ratio a is to b a is uh, called antecedent and the second term b is called consequent so in the ratio 5 is to 8 5 is antecedent and 8 is consequent then 5 is antecedent 8 is uh, consequent but antecedent 30 is what antecedent then this 30 is equal to 5 parts just to in the ratio me ratio lo em ledu ichina ratio lo parts ga treat cheyandi given values then just some parts ga treat chesta then you will get the answer so the antecedent is 5 parts the consequent is uh, 8 parts once again the ant antecedent is the 5 part and the consequent is the 8 parts then you have to take uh, the antecedent of 5 parts is uh, 30 and what about the consequent 8 parts okay so antecedent and the 5 parts of this quantum consequent and the 8 parts of this kunte if 5 parts uh, the antecedent 5 parts is equal to 30 then what about consequent 8 parts okay parts ka discuss just some joandi kanuj questions one good so the antecedent 5 parts is equal to 30 then what about the consequent 8 parts so 5 parts ka 30 8 8 parts how much so 5 parts ikan uchi questions anni gura ide ide manner lo eli pota manam so required value 8 parts given value 5 parts required value final assigned 8 given value kinder and 5 8 by 5 into 30 8 by 5 into 30 5 1 5 6 8 into 6 so 48 8 into 6 in the 48 so what is 48 48 is the consequent okay 48 is the consequent so in the given question what is the antecedent 30 then what is the consequent 48 antecedent is 30 
consequent is 48, cancel just same with number 6, 5, 6, 8, 6, 5, 6, 8, which is nothing but given ratio, which is nothing but given ratio. If you simplify the ratio of antecedent and consequent, you will get the simplified form of the given ratio. Manam we have the antecedent to consequent, find out the ratio, simplify the ratio, and the required ratio, and the given ratio, and the given ratio, and the given ratio. So, simple questions are the same, and the same, and the same, and the parts are the same, and the same questions are the same, and the parts are the same, and the same, right? So, listen to me, next question is the same. In the ratio, in the ratio, in the ratio, 7 is to 12, 7 is to 12, if the consequent, if the consequent is 60, fine, fine, it's antecedent, antecedent, it's antecedent. Right. In the ratio of 7 is to 12, if the consequent is 60, if the consequent is 60, find the antecedent. So, the given ratio is 7 is to 12, 7 is what? Antecedent, 12 is consequent. 7 is antecedent, 12 is consequent. This 12 parts is nothing but what? 60. The consequent 12 parts, the consequent 12 parts is nothing but 60, then we find uh, Antecedent seven parts. How much? Simple I aim the parts of this kuno chase on the in the given ratio seven is to twelve, seven is the antecedent, twelve is the consequent. Seven is the antecedent, twelve is the consequent. Seven means seven parts, and consequent is uh, twelve parts. Uh, but in the question, in the previous question, uh, in the previous question, uh, uh, the answer antecedent is given, but we find a consequent. But in this question, we have consequent, then we have to find the antecedent. 12 parts of 68, then antecedent is 7 parts how much? 7 by 12 into 60. 7 by required value, final ask only given value in the end. Required value, required parts is taken as numerator. Given value, given parts are taken as a denominator into given value, given original value that is 60. So, 12 once 12. 5, 7 into 5, how much? 35. So, 35 is the answer. Okay? 35 is the, what is 35? Antecedent. Antecedent is the 35. Right? Vidhi. Listen to my next question. Ila question just kundil landi. Next question. The ratio between, the ratio between between this incomes, incomes, incomes of A and B, the ratio between incomes of A and B is, is 9 is to 7 respectively, 9 is to 7 respectively, if income of, income of A is 8100 rupees fine income of income of b right this is the next question in the ratio the ratio between incomes of a and b is 9 to 7 respectively if income of a is 8100 rupees find income of b right so 9 into 7 Choose only chinna questions which are fundamental questions. The ratio between the incomes of A and B is 9 is to 7, A, B, A is to B. Okay, 9 is to 7. So, what is 9 is to 7? What is 9 parts? A's income. What is 7 parts? B's income. So, what is what is 8100 rupees? A's income. Nothing but 9 parts. Manaku 8100 rupees and the A in the choose kondo sorry, A income. A income ka but 9 parts ki equal. In the ratio 9 is to 7, in the ratio 9 is to 7, A's income is 9 parts, B income is 7 parts. 9 parts is 8100 rupees, hai te, B's income 7 parts, how much? Okay, this is the So, 9 parts, A's income 9 parts, nothing but 8100 rupees. Then what about B's income? 7, chala simple question. Idi. Manak, each one amount is 8100 rupees, 8100 rupees, 8100 rupees, A's income. 
A income then equal 9 parts ki. In the given ratio, what is 9 parts? A's income, what is 7 parts? B's income. So, 9 parts ki 8100 rupees hai te, then you find a B's income, 7 parts how much? So, 7 required value put pina raayala, given value kinda raayala, 7 by 9 into 8100 rupees. So, 919 9s. 9 ones, 9 nines, okay, numerator and denominator can be cancelled, 9 ones, 9 nines, so 7 into 9, 7 nines, 6300 rupees, 6300 rupees, this is what B's income, fundamental questions manan just from the ratio low, so B's income, B's income is what, 6300 6, rupees, so simple ga, ikara manak parts find out chain, so once again, what is 9 parts, what is, what is the income of A, 9 parts, what is income of B, 7 parts, what is the sum of the incomes of A and B? Income of A is 9 parts, income of B is 7 parts. What is the sum of the income of A and B? 9 plus 7, 16 parts. Okay, 16 parts. What is the difference between the income of A and B? Income of difference and A, 2 parts. Okay, A income and 9 parts discount, B income and 7 parts discount, sum of A, sum of incomes of A and B and 16 parts discount. Difference between the income of A and B and A, two parts this one. Just to, you have to think uh, as parts. One just to parts got this one, chase one day, illipoli, which are all fundamental questions, basic questions on matter. So, calculations so, of cut cancellation, jayana must say, which is right. Choose for next question. Chain the question, Jen. If prices of TV and uh, computer. If prices of TV and computer, computer are in the ratio, are in the ratio twelve is to seven respectively. Twelve is to seven respectively. If the price of TV is if the price of TV is 15,600 rupees, 15,600 rupees, find the price of computer, right? Find the price of computer. This is the question. If prices of TV and computer are in the ratio 12 to 7 respectively, if the price of TV is 15,600 rupees, then find the price of computer, find the price of computer. So, we have two articles, TV and computer. The prices of TV and computer on the ratio 12 is to 7, 12 is to 7, what is 12 parts? What is 12 parts? This is TV price and what is 7 parts? This is computer price. 12 is to 7, simple questions on my way, 12 parts, TV price, computer, 7 parts. And uh, next, what is 15,600 rupees? This is TV price. What is 15,600 rupees? That is TV price, nothing but 12 parts. So, 12 parts can be 12 parts key 15,600. 15,600 is just you have to find uh, the price of computer. The price of computer, 7 parts, how much? 7 parts, how much? If the price of TV, that is 12 parts is equal to 15,600, find the price of computer that is 7 parts. Okay, 12 parts of 15,600 is 7 parts, how much? Simple question. So, required value 7, given value 12, 7 by 12 into 15,600, 12, 1, 12, 13s, 12, 1, 12, 13s, 12, 1, 12, 15 to 12, both are 3, 36, 12, 3s, 13, 7, 9100, 9100. 9100. So, 9100 rupees is the price of a TV, computer. So, here we have two articles, the TV and computer, the prices of TV and computer and the ratio 2 to 7 respectively. If the price of TV is 15,600 rupees, just uh, you have to find the price of a computer. Of course, uh, if you have the price of TV, then you can find the sum of the prices of TV and computer also. And of course, you can find the difference between the uh, prices of TV and computer also. So, if you have one value, if you have one value and the ratio of the given uh, prices or articles, whatever uh, the given ratio, if you have only one value, then you can find any value. 
In this question, in this question, just so you have only the price of TV that is 15,600 rupees, then you can find the price of computer and the price of uh, uh, the sum of the prices of TV and computer and the uh, difference between the prices of TV and computer also. If you have only one single value, then you can find any value. Then you can find any value. One another question, right? Write down next question. In a class of students, in a class of students, in a class of students, the ratio between the ratio between boys to girls, the ratio between boys to girls is is 13 is to 11 respectively, 13 is to 11 respectively. If number of boys are number of boys are 65, then find total number of total number of students total number of students in the class total number of students in the class okay right so this is another question in a class of students in a class of students the ratio between boys to girls is 13 is to 11 respectively if number of boys in the class is 65 then find the total number of students in the class right so 13 is to 11 13 is to 11 so what is 13 is to 11? This is the ratio between boys to girls in the class. So boys are 13 parts and girls are 11 parts. Boys are 13 parts and girls are 11 parts. And you have to observe what is the given value 65? What is the given value 65? 65 students are boys. 65 students are boys. 65 is nothing but 13 parts. Just you have to select the given number. The given number is equal to how many parts? Just you have to think like that. Okay. Then the number of boys in the class is 65. These 65 students are equivalent to 13 parts. 13 parts then. So 13 parts equal to 65. 13 parts equal to 65. Then what is the question? Observe the question. What is the question? Total number of students in the class. In the previous question, in the previous question, the price of computer is given. Then we find the price of TV. And of course, the price of TV is given. Then we can we find uh, the price of computer. But in this question, the number of students, uh, the number of boys are given, and he uh, asked the total number of students in the class. Total adu thunar gaapat thirteen plus eleven is equal to twenty four. If he asked to find the total number of girls, just you have to find only 11 parts, but he is asking total number of students in the class. Total number of students in the class are 13 plus 11. Boys and girls, boys and girls, 13 plus 11, 24 parts. Okay, 24 parts. If 13 parts equivalent to 65, then what about 24 parts? Then the required value given, the required value is written as the numerator and the given value, the required, given value is uh, written as a denominator. So 24 by 30 into 65. So 13 once 13, 5, 24, 5 is 120. 120. What is 120? Total number of students in the class is 120. This is the procedure. Just you have to think the given value is uh, equal to how many parts. Manaki china to one value is equal to the value. Just to observe just then you can say, then then you can find any value, any value. And go uh, question this one, next question, next one. <coughs> If two numbers, if two numbers are in the ratio, if two numbers are in the ratio, five to seven respectively. This is a very easy question. Two numbers are in the ratio five to seven respectively, and and difference between difference between them and difference between them is difference between them is 12 find sum of two numbers find sum of two numbers sum of two numbers you can take uh, two numbers three numbers four numbers okay then this is the second question next question if two numbers are in the ratio 5 to 7 respectively and the difference between them is 12. Find the sum of two numbers. Find the sum of two numbers. 
ओके टू नंबर्स का वोच प्राइजेस का वोच नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स का वोच बॉयस गर्ल्स मेल्स फीमेल्स वाट एवर कांपोनेंट्स और वाट एवर कांपोनेंट्स मे बी देन द क्वेश्चन इज सेम एंड द प्रोसीजर इज सेम ओके टू नंबर्स आर इन द रेशो फाइव टू सेवन द रेशो बिटवीन टू नंबर्स इज फाइव टू सेवन द फर्स्ट नंबर इज फाइव पार्स द सेकेंड नंबर इज सेवन पार्स एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन बोथ इज टू पार्स वाट इज ट्वेल्व जस्ट टू वाट आई सेट आई सेट वन थिंग वाट आई सेट जस्ट टू द गिवेन वैल्यू इज ईक्वल टू हाउ मेनी पार्स जस्ट यू हेव टू थिंक द गिवेन वैल्यू इज ट्वेल्व ई ट्वेल्व एंटी डिफरेंस बिटवीन ट्वेल्व डिफरेंस बिटवीन टू नंबर इज ट्वेल्व This twelve is not first number. This twelve is not second number. This twelve is not sum of two numbers. This twelve is the difference between two numbers. The difference between two numbers is two parts. So two parts of twelve are there. Just so find the least numbers. If the question is find the least number, you have to find five parts. If you want the second number, you have to find seven parts. But he is asking sum of two numbers. That is twelve parts. Five plus seven, twelve parts. Two parts could twelve eighty. Then what about twelve parts? Okay, procedure is same. Two parts twelve eighty. Twelve parts how much? Twelve by two into twelve. So two one, two six. Twelve into six is seventy two. Seventy two is the answer. What is seventy two? Seventy two is the sum of two numbers. So you learnt a number of questions. So mana kunta hi. We can practice this kunta bolle. Just to Just you have to think. You have to assume the given ratios are parts. Okay. In our questions, in Malay next class, lo Malay, a number of questions, different questions, man practice jadam. Okay. Keep watching. Have a nice day.